Magnus Carlsen, the world number one, is back in action in the final tournament of the Meltwater Champions Chess Tour. So it's a rapid play event. And in the first round, he played a mini match against Wesley So, who is in superb form at the moment, having won the Global Chess Challenge on chess.com. So this is the third game. The first two games are very tight. So it's rapid play. Carlson with white and it's a Berlin. Yes, I know there are a lot of fans of the Berlin out there. Actually, I think it can lead to some fascinating positions. And in this game, we are going to see a very tense encounter. Carlson keeps the tension by playing the pawn to d3, just protecting here. He does like this pawn structure. And now we have imbalance in the position as Carlson gives up bishop for knight. Now, don't take that pawn because there will be trouble. That's loose. Gotta watch out for that one. So castles. Knight d7, and now c3. So Carlsen is perhaps going to play d4 and get a big center. a5, so that prevents white gaining space, gives the bishop somewhere to drop back to. Bishop g5 hits the queen. And actually, we're already in slightly uncharted territory. But Carlsen does like to play this bishop out to g5 at a very early stage. We see him do this so often in Spanish positions, in Gioca Piano. It's very provocative. It's so typical of his style. He's tempting black to push forward with these pawns. Bishop comes back to d6, so that's preempting d4. d4 comes anyway. Queen e7 just bolsters this point. Knight d2. And now Wesley can't resist. He pushes forward on the king side and h5. So already we have quite a critical situation on the board. And the outlines of this game. Well, they're, they're appearing now. G4. And pawn takes pawn. We're going to see the point of this in a second. You could recapture with the knight, but, well, then knight takes and... Well, I mean, this, this is a very interesting position, actually. Um, also extremely double-edged. Let's go back here. Wesley wants to keep this bishop locked in, so recaptures with the pawn. But there is a downside to this move. It gives this knight a very nice square on g5. Yes, this bishop is nothing to write home about, but that knight on g5, hmm, that's interesting. But something interesting happens here, because if Wesley can bring his king over to the queen side, then there'll be a very nice opportunity to bring the rook over, sack here, and just continue on the king side. So I think this is a, this is a fascinating moment in the game, actually. So here's my first question for you. How would you play as white in this position? White to play. What did Carlson do next and why? Cheers, folks. Time for some tea. Well, perhaps you were thinking about pawn to f3 to open up the f file. Well, in that case, black is in time. Bishop d7 and castle's queen side. And I think that's an interesting position for black to play. Carlson played a4. Okay, looks a little bit strange, but the point is that after bishop d7, this is the game continuation, he basically wanted to create as much chaos on the queen side as possible, deterring the king 
from castling queenside, so it's very clever. Now, after a4, of course, it's possible for black to go the other way. But watch what happens. Check here. And white has a couple of options. Maybe you pop the king in the corner and play f3 to open up the king side. Or one could also play rook e1 and just bring that knight to e3. That's a, a, a favorite Carlson maneuver. And, you know, perhaps then look at getting in on f5. I mean, both continuations are possible. But it's all about trying to catch the king, trying to unsettle the king. And it starts with this move, a4. So here's the game. Bishop d7, b4. Really interesting move. So if that's taken, the knight goes back back, push the knight back, and then knight c4, you can see that, I mean, obviously the king cannot go to the queen side now, but even going to the king side is, you know, is pretty fraught when there's a knight on g5. Or castles king side immediately, check, can take here, let's, let's bring the rook up the board and then play f3. So just for a moment, those rooks are split. I mean, really, this rook needs to come back here. But then there's possibility to play a5, push the knight back, and open up the f5. Basically, black is being torn by both sides. There's too much to deal with here. So, you know, I think this is a really clever strategy on the part of Carlsen. a4 and then b4. So Wesley played c5. He wants to resolve this tension on the queen side and then perhaps choose where he's going to put the king. So, for example, after c5, if b5, then the king is safe to come here. Then the rook comes over and interesting possibilities, sacking the exchange. Or if this is taken, again... This somehow resolves the situation on the queen side. I mean, this bishop is looking very good now. Uh, maybe, you know, this one will come here. And again, castle's queen side is looking very likely. Therefore, Carlson exchanged on a5 and played queen b3. So he's, he's keeping alive the possibility of play on the queen side. And obviously it's not, well, casting queenside is impossible now because the rook has moved. But yeah, he's keeping the queenside position open and that prevents the king casting for the moment. So the king is, you know, feeling a little bit insecure in the middle. Well, or potent, there's potential. So Carlson gives up a pawn. Well, you know, Wesley can feel happy about that, but the position is opening up. And that's dangerous when these rooks are split. Just compare black's king with white's king. White's king is totally secure. This is just the kind of situation that Carlson likes. In practical terms, it's simply more difficult for black to play than white. Rook a6, so that now the rook is protected, then this bishop can move. Rook b1. Interesting, you know, Carlson continues with the pressure on the queen side. So it means the knight can't move easily because the b7 pawn is on. Bishop c6 played, dropping back, hitting the queen. Queen b3. Hmm, interesting. Wesley offering to repeat the position. If the queen goes back, then you know we're repeating the position. Carlson not interested. Queen b2. He wants to play on. I should mention they, the first two games were drawn. This is the third game in their, their set of four games. Again, here is a very interesting moment. Okay, time for some more tea. How would you play with black in this position? Wesley to play with black. What would you do? Black to play.
At some moment, he has to decide what to do with his king. And he decided to castle on the king's side. But king d7 is a really interesting option. So it's all about bringing this rook into play. We don't like split rooks. Rooks like to work together. And, I mean, I think if one, if one were playing a classical game, then perhaps it's possible to play like this. I mean, the king is never going to be completely secure in the middle, but there are pawns around the king. There's a bishop there. It does give it protection. Now, this is still a very unclear position. You know, I would be interested to play this move, knight f1, and spin the knight around here. This is very typical. It's really unclear. But castles kingside, this is incredibly risky. Carlson plays knight c4. You could also play knight f1 coming to here. Now, if that's taken, then queen takes, hits the rook, also threatens a check here. So, nice bit of tactics. And, yeah, you never know. This knight might be threatening something or other. The king just pops itself in the corner. Wants to get off this diagonal. Knight e3. Yeah, that's where really where the knight wants to go. Heading into one of these squares. So, rook a8. Okay, joins up with the other rook. This is what Wesley was intending, of course, with by getting the king into the corner. C4. Okay, an interesting move. Um, I mean, this basically means that black isn't playing c4, uh, allowing this bishop for freedom. So some freedom. So this kind of shuts in that bishop here. Not a beautiful piece. And perhaps sets up this idea. But maybe knight f5 as well. Really tricky. And I think this is basically an easier position for white to play than black. And of course, it opens up this diagonal. And now there is even a threat to take on e5, followed by a knight fork on f7. Bishop c6 played. So Wesley trying to just take exchange pieces, you know, take take some of the edge from White's initiative. Remember, he is a pawn up, so you know exchanges are going to be favourable. And here, well, Carlson should just play f3, and this really exposes the fact that the king is not well placed on the king side. You can see these pieces just way across the other side of the board, um, completely offside, and after this. Just rook f1. And very soon white pieces are going to come in. Um, you know, you can imagine some scenario like this. Rook f7 and the queen comes to e2. I mean, this looks absolutely terrible. But Carlson was sort of playing in, in quite strict positional fashion. Knight d5. I mean, this is also a very dangerous move. Um, Wesley should exchange though he needs to exchange pieces and this is a difficult position for black but it might be tenable let's go back queen e8 played queen c3 so again there's, there could be some threat here to take and play knight f7 knight d7 f3 so finally Carlson uh, gets this move in you know it's been somehow it's been on the cards for the past 20 moves um, but yeah it looks very logical to break through to the king with you know black's pieces still not looking very good and here well Wesley should take this and this is a very difficult position to defend but there are still chances there but instead he played queen a8, he's looking for counterplay. 
But now that's another piece across the other side of the board. And this is just winning. In fact, it's, it's just a straight blunder. Knight c7 just wins the exchange. Well, so, so, sort of. Um, I mean, this is the only way to keep material, but with the queen coming in, it's, it's of course, a disaster. Um, queen a5 played. Check and Carlson finished off very smartly like this. And rook b7. So, once again, it's just worth comparing the two kings. Carlson, Carlson ensured that his king has a fortress around it. It's completely safe on h2. But in the end, black's king, with no pawn cover, is just too exposed. And this knight is attacked. And then that's the end. I mean, there's actually no way to defend that knight. I mean, and if here, well, okay, let's let's go to mate. That really is the end of the story. Um, and Carlson drew the fourth game, so won, won his mini-match against Wesley. So actually it was a very tense match overall. I mean, Carlson obviously edged it. He has a habit of doing that. But Wesley had some really interesting chances. So... Uh, I'll be dipping in and out of this tournament and uh, keep you updated. Thanks for watching.